So we talked about wills, and we talked about intestacy. I want to talk about now powers of attorney, which again are very important documents for uh, every adult to have. Even if you don't have kids, even if you're 18 years old, even if your kid is 18 and going off to college, a medical power of attorney and a financial power of attorney are very important. The first I want to talk about is the financial power of attorney. Uh, the full title is a durable general financial power of attorney. So this allows somebody else to take over in your shoes, stand in your shoes, and do things that, that you could do legally and financially if you become incapacitated. And so the durable part means that it works even if you're incapacitated, and the general part means that it's for a wide scope of transactions. Maybe you have bought a house and you weren't able to go to the closing, so you wrote a limited power of attorney that allowed your spouse or somebody else to go and sign on your behalf at closing. If you did that, that's limited to a specific transaction. A durable general power of attorney says, anything I can do, uh, real estate, banking, taxes, you name it, my agent can do for me. And we can make it effective immediately. Sometimes I do that. If you're going to join the Foreign Service, I've got quite a few clients that have done that, uh, and you're going to be in, in Sub-Saharan Africa for three years, you might write a power of attorney that's effective immediately that's not because you're incapacitated, but because it's not easy for you to do transactions. You need someone local to do that on your behalf. Most people, though, make it effective only if two doctors say they're unable to make their own decisions. So this power of attorney is there kind of in the background, and then if you become incapacitated, the doctors would do a, an assessment of you, and if you don't have the capacity, then your agent can act on your behalf. So who do you pick as your financial power of attorney agent? Now, in most cases, you're going to pick your spouse as the first choice, uh, but if your spouse isn't available, then you want to pick somebody else that you trust who's going to be able to deal with your finances. Uh, and so you want somebody who can you know, either do the accounting or hire somebody that can help with that kind of stuff who's going to be responsible for doing that. And sometimes when we're putting together an estate plan, the money people are different than the healthcare people, as we'll see in a minute. But it could all be all the same folks. So again, every, every family is different. You need to make a choice on that. Now, your, your financial power of attorney agent will have what's called a fiduciary duty to you, which means that uh, they have to do what's in your best interest. So if your agent runs off and takes the money out of your accounts after you become incapacitated and spends it on their vacation to Barbados, then somebody can take them to court and sue them and get the money back, right? But you'd rather pick somebody who's honest, trustworthy, where you're not going to run into this problem in the first place, right? So the next thing I want to talk about is the Advanced Medical Directive, or Living Will. These are two names for the same thing. I don't know who picked Living Will as a good name for this, because it just confuses people. It has nothing to do with the last will and testament we talked about earlier. Uh, the, these things came really out of that Terry Schiavo case, if you remember from years ago. She was on life support for 20 years. Her husband said, take her off life support. The parents said, no, leave her on life support. And they fought about this for years and years in the courts. And so states passed laws that said, you get to pick. You get to pick who's going to make these decisions, and you get to decide how long and what kind of life support you want to have if you're in a terminal condition. So the living will or advanced medical directive is only a designation for what you want to have happen if you're in a terminal condition. And you can say what kind of uh, food or hydration or procedures or how do I contact my agent, who's making those decisions. And the, the power of attorney that we prepare is pretty specific. There's several different uh, scenarios where you can say, if I'm in this situation, I have this happen. If I'm in that situation, I have that happen. Uh, or for women, if I'm pregnant, and then you know this is the priority, right? Not stuff anybody likes to think about, but better to make these decisions now so your family's not guessing uh, or trying to worry that they're making the wrong decision someday. So the other part that I put together in the same medical document is a general medical power of attorney. And this is for the scenario that you're not in a terminal condition, but you are unable to make your own medical decision. The most common thing that triggers this is dementia. You get older and you don't know what's going on, but sometimes you could be in an accident, you could be in a coma or unconscious for a period of time, and you might wake up and recover capacity, but somebody might need to make decisions temporarily. So this allows someone else to make healthier decisions on your behalf. You can make it effective immediately, or if two doctors say you're unable to make your own decisions, the only times I really see people make it effective immediately is if they've already been diagnosed with Alzheimer's or some other dementia condition. They still have capacity now, but they know that soon they won't, right? And by making it effective immediately, you don't have to go through this determination later of have I crossed that threshold. But most young folks, they make it effective only if two doctors say they're unable to make their own decisions. So again, it's sitting there in the background. It's available so that it can spring into life if it's needed. Uh, and you, and you pick who the agent is for this, and you give them some parameters of the different kinds of care you like in different scenarios. 
The other very important thing we put in here is a HIPAA release. Uh, every time you go to the doctor's office, they make you sign something waiving your HIPAA rights. HIPAA is the most waived privacy right that you, you can ever see in the law. Uh, but without a HIPAA provision, your spouse even goes to the doctor and says, what's wrong with my spouse? I need to make a decision. And they say, well, we can't really talk about their care because that's private, right? It's a private medical records. Uh, and so the medical power of attorney would allow your agents you've picked to talk to your doctors, get full information, and make an informed decision. So if you don't have a medical power of attorney uh, and you become incapacitated, then uh, somebody's going to have to go to court and get appointed as your guardian in order to act on your behalf. Right? Now, oftentimes the hospital will take a spouse as the next of kin, but if there's any confusion or if there's anybody competing over the decision, like in the Terry Schiavo case, then off you go to court to get a guardian appointed, right? Very expensive, very time consuming, and it's a public affair, right? Likewise, with the financial power of attorney, if you don't have a financial power of attorney and you become incapacitated, then um, you have to have somebody go to court and get appointed as your conservator and deal with your finances. And again, public, expensive, and you don't necessarily get to pick who's going to do that. It could be the next attorney on the list at the court, right? So how do you pick your medical power of attorney agent? Very similar to the financial, usually you'll have your spouse first. The big distinction here is with medical, you often need someone to make a decision quickly with as little emotion as possible, right? Um, and so if it's not your spouse, then who do you pick? Maybe it's the sibling who's a nurse or the friend from school who became a doctor uh, or that the, the sister or brother who's going to make a little less uh, emotional decision, right? And maybe you don't pick the same person as you pick the financial because you're afraid that they'd hem and haw or they'd be too emotional about the whole thing. Again, tough thing. Every family is different, but you want to be able to pick that. And by making the choice in advance, you can make the best choice for your family.